Questions of Doom. Hello and welcome back to another Questions of Doom. In this series, as ever, I attempt to answer questions that you send my way using the archaeosoup at gmail.com email address, as displayed on the YouTube channel homepage, but also, as you'll see, at the end of this video. In answering these questions by video, it is my fond hope that the answer is made useful not only to the person who has asked the question, but also anyone else out there who may be wondering the same thing. Now, today's question comes from a fellow who recently made a video response to one of uh, our archaeology gastronomy videos. Uh, he was exploring the recipe for garum, that wonderful Roman um, uh, ubiquitous sauce, which went on everything from breakfast all the way through to your your, uh, your dessert with your with your evening meal. Um, mm. uh, so, if you want to check out that video response, it was a very good one, and um, I'll put the link in the video information below. Anyway, his question goes like this: Dear Archaeosubster. <clears throat> I really have to thank you for approving my Garam Liquiman video response. I've often been tempted to write to you a question of doom, but I never know what to ask. After much brain racking and sleepless nights, I've come up with a question, and one that you might really enjoy answering. Could you explain, obviously briefly, where the Welsh language originates, and how it fits into the Indo-European language family? Or, if it does indeed belong to that linguistic group? Um, on a side note, you put um, this, you wrote, Jochen Bauer in the comments on my video response. Could you per, per chance, sorry, look, could you per chance pronounce it, I can't pronounce your email, um, and translate it into English? Well, Jochen Bauer simply means thank you very much. Dioch, thank you. Un Bauer is kind of um, in the big, big, sort of um, thank you, big thank you, big thanks. Jochen Bauer, thank you very much. Uh, and thanks again for publishing such great videos. As a guy with a BA in archaeology, um, but long since having fallen out of the field, this channel, this channel lets me feel as though I am still keeping current. Um, keep up the great work. Skeptic Canuck, the Canadian skeptic. Well, Skeptic Canuck, you do ask a good question, and a question well worth exploring. I'm not a, a linguistic specialist, but it's a question that I, I, I know a little bit about, not tons about, but uh, it's also a question that I am interested in myself. So. Uh, let, us, let us see where this takes us. Um, first of all, Welsh is a language which usually results in two major responses. The first one is pride. People who speak Welsh tend to be very proud of speaking Welsh. Uh, there, there have been phases in the past when speaking Welsh wasn't such a good thing. During the 19th century, for example, um, it was frowned upon because Welsh wasn't the, the language of commerce. It wouldn't get you anywhere in business. Uh, English was, was that language. Um, but also as well, uh, uh, sorry, but now rather, the, the response tends to be one of pride. You tend to be proud if you can speak um, some Welsh, at least some Welsh. Um, uh, the other response though tends to be derision, um, usually from English speakers who say that's just a silly language and you need to leave loads of phlegm in your throat in order to pronounce all these <laughs> noises. But it, that's not entirely true. Yes, there are um, sounds which are relatively alien um, to the English tongue as it were. Um, for example, the double L's, the concept of a tanechi, uh, that kind of thing, of, of this world. But um, it, it's, not as, it's not as awkward as it may at first seem. Welsh can be a bit deceptive because every letter in, uh, in a Welsh word is pronounced the way um, you learn it. So uh, there are no silent uh, letters. For example, knowledge, there's a silent K in knowledge. Well, there are no silent letters in Welsh. Um, so it's actually deceptively simple to pronounce Welsh words. So it, 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 you know, it, these are the two main responses that people have. Uh, to Welsh. Now, um, it's worth mentioning that the the, uh, the origins of the Welsh language lie in um, in the sixth century, the sixth century, um, and it is actually descended from the British language, the language which was being spoken by um, Britons and um, the Iron Age people of Britain uh, before and to a certain extent during the Roman um, occupation of these islands. So uh, Welsh is fairly well connected in that, in that respect to, to quite a, uh, um, a, a heritage and therefore it's actually one of, it's seen by many as one of the oldest languages in all of Europe. So it's got quite a, quite a heritage. Um, now Sill's in, Sill International's Ethnologue uh, lists six so-called living Celtic languages in the world. Well, um, the, uh, these uh, six are defined as being healthy based upon the number of native speakers that there are. So there are four which are very healthy and there are two which aren't doing quite so well. 
So uh, there's uh, Goidelic Irish or Irish Gaelic. Uh, there's Scottish Gaelic. They're both doing okay, it seems. And especially since in Ireland um, uh, Gaelic is being used by the government, actually, and, and also you have to learn it up until a certain age in some places. Um, Welsh is obviously doing very well. Uh, plenty of people in Wales speak Welsh, and in some places you have to learn it before you can even move into the area, bizarrely. Um, I have mixed feelings on that, incidentally. And um, there's Breton, which is a language um, from uh, um, the northwest of France. Um, and the two which are in, um, which are less healthy, are Cornish. Uh, that's in Cornwall, and actually Cornwall Cornish is very closely connected to Welsh, in fact, and in turn to Breton. Um, it, not least because Cornwall, for um, parts of its history, has, was part of, of, of a sort of a Welsh identity almost, or part of that. You know, it was all uh, a cultural block almost. Um, and there's also Manx from the Isle of Man, which isn't related to, well, is related to, but isn't directly related to, or so directly related to, uh, to Welsh necessarily, um, but it's more, more closely related to Irish and Scottish Gaelic. But Manx is the one which is in most danger because it's got the fewest speakers. So, um, so yes, those are the six main living Celtic languages. Now the name Welsh actually, it's an exonym, it's, it's a bit of an insult, it comes from, um, from Old English, it's, it's a Walha, it's always it, Walha, it's um, um, outsiders, foreigners, outcasts, people who are different from, from us, you know, kind of thing. So in some ways saying Welsh, uh, or calling someone Welsh, is actually a bit of an insult in, in a, in a, to a certain extent. Obviously not necessarily now, unless you are vividly, you know, or rabidly anti-Welsh. Um, but uh, but uh, in Welsh itself, Cymraeg or Ogumraeg are the words which are used to say the Welsh language. Cymraeg or Ogumraeg. Um, there's uh, uh, Cymru, which is the name of the country itself, of Wales, and there's also Cymru, which are uh, Welsh people, or uh, brothers and sisters of Wales, as it, as it sort of translates. So that, that's actually how Welsh says itself, is um, Cymraeg or Ogumraeg. Um, <clears throat> now then. Now, this is, this is where we start to answer your question, um, Skeptic, uh, Skeptic Canuck. Skeptic Canuck. It's kind of hard to say that. Anyway, Skeptic Canuck, this is where we start to answer your question. Now, um, the, the, yes, you're quite right. Um, the Celtic languages are part of the Indo-European family uh, as a broader, broader um, entity. And uh, Proto, or Common Celtic, is one of the main branches of that family. The other main branches are Anatolian, uh, sort of Turkey, that kind of region, Hellenic, which includes Greek, Indo-Iranian, which includes um, uh, Punjab, for example, um, Italic, which includes Latin, Armenian, Germanic, uh, Tokarian, and Balto-Slavic, uh, <clears throat> and also Albanian. So those are the main branches of the Indo-European family group, uh, language family group, rather. Uh, and Proto or Common Celtic is one of those branches. Now, this branch, the Common, this, this, uh, common Celtic or Proto Celtic, can be split up into four main uh, sections. There's Gaulish. Um, now, this obviously was spoken by the Gauls, and um, uh, it is, uh, from it you get Galatian, um, Leptonic, sorry, Lepontic rather, and also Noric. So these are uh, languages related to the, to the first of the four subsections of, um, <laughs> of the uh, Proto or Common Celtic uh, branch of the Indo-European language group. The second one is Hispano-Celtic, which includes Celtiberian, spoken by the Celtiberians, of the Iberian Peninsula, now unfortunately um, uh, fairly extinct. Um, there's the Brythonic uh, element, or Brythonic branch of the Celtic branch, which includes um, uh, Breton, includes Cornish, includes Welsh, includes uh, Cumbric, which is uh, unfortunately now an extinct language, but was sort of from the Cumbria region, that kind of area. Uh, there's Goidelic, which is Irish, Manx, and Scottish, or Gaelic to a certain extent. And those are the four branches of the <laughs> Celtic branch of the Indo-European language family. So um, that is basically the answer to your question, yes. Um, Welsh is part of the Indo-European um, family tree, and, um, and uh, there, there are four branches that go into the Celtic, and then from the Celtic there are many branches that come off the Indo-European uh, tree itself. Now there are various ways actually of categorising these four branches um, of, the, of the Celtic branch. 
Um, now, the first one is continental and insular languages. So continental languages would be those which um, uh, supposedly developed independently or, f or at the very least had a period of independent development on the continent. So you have Gaulish, celto um, Hibarian, uh, this kind of thing. Uh, so, or rather, uh, yeah, so Celtiberian rather, or Hispano-Celtic. Um, the other um, element of that, uh, as opposed to continental, would be the insular languages. These would be the ones which developed in the British Isles. So, for example, um, uh, Cornish, Cornish, Welsh, Irish, and Scottish, and Manx, and Cumbric. Now, um, there's another way of dividing it entirely, which is to do with how the sounds developed, rather than where they developed, how um, the different languages took words from the common mother language, and um, use them through cultural uh, choice or just through virtue of being far, far, far apart in different ways. Now, an excellent example of this actually comes from the word for head. In Welsh, head is pen. Um, so, penibrin uh, is top of the mountain. I used to know someone who lived in a house called Penibrin. Um, whereas in, in, uh, in Irish, I'm probably pronouncing, pronouncing this terribly, it's more like ken or kean, uh, C E A N N. Now, um, this is P and Q Celtic, so-called, because what they do is they take the, the mother word, which was something like uh, pen, and, uh, and they, they take off um, the front or add to the front, depending upon the type of Celtic language that, that it is. So, in the case of Irish, it's a Q Celtic, so it has a more of a Q or K sound, so then you have Ken or Ken, and um, in Welsh, it's a P Celtic, so it's more of a P or, P or pen sound for a head. Now this, this translates, for, or this rather, um, transposes for various words along similar lines, P and Q or P and K kind of sounds. Now these arguments about insular continental, P and Q, they're fairly arbitrary and people um, will be debating this until the world explodes because, um, uh, as you might expect, the Celtic, langu Celtic language group isn't necessarily all that well represented as a written language for a long period of time. For a long time it existed outside of um, uh, uh, um, a habit of writing, and therefore this, this evolution will never fully be understood. But on this, those are the various ways of dividing up the, the, the Celtic languages today, and um, the debate continues, basically. So there you go. Um, I, have, uh, I, have to, I have answered your question. Now, one of the things I actually find personally interesting is, um, or I've tried to answer your question, rather, but one of the things I find personally interesting is the development of Welsh over time. Now, um, uh, when you think of words that are new, um, it's actually quite interesting because, we, uh, for example, the word ambulance in Welsh, what we did, what we tended to do was just um, make um, that particular word just Welshified. So in, in English, it's ambulance; in Welsh, it's ambulance. Um, whereas other words, what uh, what people have decided to do, almost by committee in the Welsh language, is actually um, very carefully think of a new word for a new concept, such as, say, the internet. So um, there, was a, there was a discussion about what it should be called. Should it be something, something like, you know, um, uh, lightning that brings information to a screen on your desk, that kind of thing, but in Welsh. But instead, what we came up with for the internet uh, was uh, Rhin Gruid, um, which is a, uh, it's like, a, it's a network. It's a word for network. So um, it's, it's, for me, it's, the, it's not only the roots of the language, which is interesting, but also actually how you can see how the language has changed over time. And actually the same applies to English. You can see where new cultural concepts have come in or new social uh, dynamics have, 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 uh, have come into existence um, uh, just by looking at the words. So, um, so as much as your question is, is extremely interesting and um, the roots of Welsh are fascinating, I also find it fascinating how, how it is that a culture adds new words to their language. You know, and I think English is particularly good at taking on new words. So there you go. Thank you, uh, Skeptic Hanuk. I didn't have to look um, for asking that question. It was very interesting to answer. As I say, I'm not a linguist, uh, linguist, linguist. Um, so feel free to comment below if you have anything to add to this discussion. I'm, so, I'm sure um, Skeptic Hanuk would love to read your comments. Check out his video response in the information bar below. Uh, and well, that's it. So until next time, bye bye.